Now over to uh, the one that will be our special guest for today, and it's uh, Raul Fernandez, and he's a board member, as you see him in ISPSG, and he's the chief operating officer at Leda Management Consultant and Quanter. And he's been working within software measurement and, and uh, benchmarking and uh, improvement, uh, a lot of things around uh, information technology and information systems development for, I think it is around 20 years. And uh, so he's very experienced in. Fine tuning today, how to improve the management of your agile development. So, Raul, it's a very pleasure to, in, to have you here, and I'm looking forward to hear a little bit more about your topic. And okay. by that, I will stop sharing so Raul could start sharing his presentation and start having it. So, welcome, Raul. Thank you, Pierre. Let me share the presentation. Okay, thank you, Pierre. Thank you. Uh, welcome, everybody, to these presentations. First of all, apologize for Alfonso Gonzalez because finally he can lead this webinar as it was expected. Uh, so, as Pierre said, I've been working in IT for more than 20 years, implementing efficiency and quality offices in a lot of clients worldwide, helping them in their digital transformation from this perspective, using functional metrics to help them to govern their IG. So in this presentation, I will talk about the experience, my experience or, or experience at Leda working with agile teams. And, and I will show you some learn lessons that I hope it will be useful for you. Uh, digital transformation and agile development models comes uh, with a lot of advantages. Delivering value to the customers with flexibility to changes is probably the, the, the most important of, of them. That is very good, but some questions round my head. Uh, for example, do we know the value that the development teams are delivering to the users or Delivery process is just flexible, or is it efficiently flexible? That is not the same. And what about more common problems working with agile models? How can I compare the different teams involved in the product flow? Okay. So, um, in the agile manifesto, there is some elements to be to be considered. Okay individuals and interactions over processes and tools, working software over comprehensive documentation, customer collaboration over contract negotiation, responding to change over following a plan. So we can follow all these perspectives, but also we can focus in one or another of them, probably do it uh, or roles or uh, probably do a or priority. I mean, you can focus on individuals and interactions, okay? From this perspective, as you see in the image, uh, the team is the main axis and all the other concepts orbit around it, around it. The teams build the software, they interact with the customer, they have to be flexible responding to changes. But we can focus also in a perspective closer to the business. What I try to say is that probably we can focus on working software. That is the purpose of any development process, working for the business, and is, is the purpose of the teams, of course. But also we can go further because uh, the final purpose of the development process and all the collaboration between the business and the development teams is to build a product. A product that satisfies the business requirements and the final users' needs in the market. So if we focus in the product, software features 
are the value that the team has to deliver. So I will talk in this presentation about product. I will talk about teams during all the presentations, okay? Let me tell you something about the development team performance based in Leda experience. Only 17% of teams are high performance. High product, they have high productivity, good level of, of autonomy, responsibility, and flexibility. So what's grown to have such a poor KPI? We can see that the theory and the reality are not aligned, doesn't go together. Let's go with some common problems in agile models based in our experience. We have observed that there is a lack of maturity and experience in teams, in both levels, in technical, at technical level and also uh, at management level. Also, value contributes to the business in a subjective way. That is, story points can be good for teams, but not so much for a business view or for a management level. Also, we can observe that there is a lot of KPIs, but, not, but they aren't very useful. Sometimes, uh, 100 of KPIs to try to control the, the, the delivery process. And not less important, a lot of clients don't spend their limited uh, IT budget in an efficient way. They spend a lot of money and they didn't know in what things they spent that lot of money. So when and how can we change this reality? When we as Leda start uh, conversations with clients that are working with agile teams, they usually are in one of the following situations. Some clients don't know anything about agile development models. They are working in a traditional model and they don't know anything and they don't know what is the better model for him and how to implement it. But sometimes they have implemented an agile model but they can't control it. They don't have any visibility about the process. They have a lack of experience, they have not implemented a, a good product development flow control. And sometimes other clients have implemented quite good models and product development flow control, but they feel that Agile teams deliver less product each year or each release. They don't know what, what really happens and what is the reason that, that they have the, that feeling, that the teams don't deliver uh, so much product uh, each re release. Whatever the situation is, it is necessary to quantify the value from a product perspective. That is very important because the product perspective, perspective is the value that uh, they are going to deliver to the business and the final users. It is necessary also to have visibility of the team's performance and also to set KPIs that helps them to control the process. Thanks to it, they can align the product development flow and the IT performance with the transformation strategy. What can we do? Let's see how can you help your clients with their AI problems. We do it through what we call agile fine tuning. First of all, you should have a flexible approach, okay? Each client is very different and each client have different priorities, different problems, different situations. So there is no magic solution for everybody. 
and also the customers change continuously. So you should have a flexible approach. We work usually in five different axes, five different, different perspectives that we recommend you to be analyzed. Um, for example, study the context of the client, its needs and objectives, its timing, priorities, and determine the best strategy to be carried out. After that, analyze how is the customer IT governance. You'll have to change it and improve it to be aligned with the strategy targets. Another point is, how are their processes? Do the development teams have the correct tools? Do the client have a complete vision of the product development flow status? What about the metrics? Are they the correct? Try not to have a lot of them, but some useful and covering the following items. For example, covering features. Features represents the, the new value at, added to drive a business result, and it has to be visible for the customer. For this, we strongly recommend standard functional sizing metrics as function points, for example, to quantify this. This allows you to compare different teams and also with different organizations. For example, ISBSG provide information that is useful for your own benchmarking proposal, but also some provide uh, companies as Leda and others in the, in the world. For example, you can have some KPIs like number of function points delivered in a period of time or per team, or the number of function points per Monday, or per release, per week. So you can have um, a better visibility about the features if you count it in function points as a, a standard metrics. Another, another item is the, the defects, okay, the quality. You have to, to, you must have metrics that allows you to follow up the quality that affect to the customer experience. For example, the number of errors per function points, also in agile teams, also per release, also, also per tribute. The risks, don't forget the regulatory requirements and vulnerabilities. So this is very important to manage and have a complete product development flow vision. In this case, try also to have a follow-up uh, status of the risk in the different product value streams. That is very important. And the depth, technical depth, for example, the factoring is necessary to remove to removal impediments to future to future delivery. So try to have an explicit view of this kind of user story. User stories dedicated to technical depth. Summarizing metrics and the as velocity of the teams, efficiency, functional quality, flow time, backlog progress per type are appropriated and comply with these items that I have uh, talked in this slide. And finally, but not less important, the teams, okay? They are in charge of the transfer business requirements into value in product. So the processes and metrics should take, should take into account the teams, their performance, and why not their happiness? And with metrics that prove it, not only feelings. In our experience, only 17% uh, of the teams scale with a good, with a good performance, okay? And the time to do, is, to do this uh, is not less than six months. So 
that is quite, quite a lot of time. American psychologist Bruce Tuckman described a sequence of stages in a development team performance from the forming level to the final art journey level. The clue is to accompany them during this process, mainly during the performance level, and help them with metrics that allow to set, to set targets and improve the performance, improve the quality to another step, to improve the delivered value, ATC. If you don't have metrics, you won't, you, you won't know if the team performance is increasing or not. A second point is that the approach has to be scalable to the whole company. From the team's perspective, to the tribes, domains, areas, departments, and the whole and the whole organization. It's very important what we call the responsibility principle. What does it mean? That each person, each person contributes to the team results and also to the reliability of the aggregated information. So you have to form the teams also in this important uh, point. A second point is that the approach has to be scalable. Um, sorry. <clears throat> the third point is to have a specific goals. For example, and specific goals to, to improve the team transparency could be uh, a goal or a goal to evaluate teams change flexibility or a goal to compare teams' performance in an objective way, for example, using ISVSG market data and comparing with the market, for example, or to increase customer satisfaction, or to develop software more efficiently. So you have to base specific goals and try to, to get them, okay? So summarizing these three points will help your clients to solve very common challenges. Challenges related to a strategy or challenge, uh, challenges related to govern the, the IT processes or challenges just related to metrics uh, and teams. We have some conclusions related with these challenges. Uh, uh, and this is these goals you have to establish them with the client in every in every service that you try to implement. Okay. Let's see some conclusions related with these challenges. For example, team stability is very important for savings and deliver product efficiently. And a stable team longer to six to six months. Uh, guaranteed around 15% of efficiency improvement due to his own maturity. So it is important to have some KPIs focus in this issue. And uh, if, if we want to improve the performance and try to ensure the stability of the teams. Another conclusion based in our experience is uh, and also a common challenge is to evaluate if agile development model is more cost efficiently than traditional ones Compar comparing them okay how much your user satisfaction cost it is cheaper now than before not only flexible also what how much money does it cost this flexibility of course, this information also um, um, will be um, will be good to, to to take some decisions. Okay, so the, in your experience, the product cost is between fifteen percent and twenty percent more expensive in agile 
that in traditional environments. Of course, this is in our clients. It's not probably the situation in your clients, but here in Spain, we, we mostly work with clients in Spain, Italy, Belgium, and South America. So in, in our clients, it's very typical that in uh, the agile model uh, is 20% or uh, more or less more expensive in, than in traditional uh, models. Also, rotation that is related with stability, the rotation inside of teams penalize the efficiency from 20% uh, up to 40%. So this is very uh, a very important issue that we try to control when we want to, uh, to evaluate the performance of the, of the teams and also the, the complete uh, workflow of the process, okay? Probably you think that you can you cannot control rotation because also uh, it's also related with with the, the the market the working market situation. Okay, you don't you cannot avoid that people go to another company, for example. Okay, but it's it is obvious that you have to control it. Okay, and work for the happiness of the team as much as possible to try to avoid it because. It is very bad for the efficiency of the of the teams. Okay. Also, it is important to have a control of the deployment uh, frequency because uh, twenty percent of the teams have problems to deploy software to uh, to external causes. So, try to control that. Try to know what are they that external causes and try to 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 improve this this situation uh, sometimes depending on tools sometimes depending on processes sometimes depending on you know, other teams okay in each client uh, the situation the situation is different so this is, these are very a very common KPI that have to be part of a more complete 360 degrees vision of the product development flow, depending on your client needs, of course. So try to set a dashboard, okay, with all these uh, point of views depending on your clients, okay? About economic KPIs, about features, about depths, about uh, efficiency, okay? Also, there is some important uh, points or KPIs related with, for example, with quality, okay? Related, related to quality, we also can observe than 25% uh, of teams allocate their efficiency improvements to errors correction. There is a lot of effort dedicated always to correct uh, errors or defect from pre previous releases. That means that one of four teams improve their productivity decreasing the quality. So this is a very, very important point and you have to uh, to check it. The efficiency is better also if the contractual model with vendors teams is based in a performance of product basis more than in a time of a material basis. Normally in a time of material basis they try to, to, to relax, okay? They try to relax. So in our experience it's better to be focused in a performance or in a product basis. We have implemented models, agile models, uh, uh, contractual agile models based on, on, on product sizing. In function points, and of course, technical, technical tax with, uh, with expert judgment, but we try to do a whole vision of the, 
of this of this situation. Another conclusion is that a lot of a lot of teams spend more than fifty percent of their time in technical debt, technical development, performance, quality improvement, and other tasks not directly related to functionality for the business. I mean, not directly related to business value. Because what is more important, not only important, but more the most important thing is to pay to deliver business business value through functionality. Of course, you can you have to cover the technical and the risk and the debt, okay? But you cannot use most of your effort just in that other uh, legs, okay? In that other axis. You have to put the focus in the product, in the product value, and in the product functionality. Uh, frequently, the delivery uh, product uh, do not comply with the quality required. And so the velocity uh, will be decreased, the efficiency of the team will be decreasing from release to release. So the use of functional metrics can give you also a more objective uh, vision of this kind of, of, of situation, okay? The, if you have, have a product focus, if you have a product approach, you can also estimate and you can also measure the product using the functional sizing. And you'll be able to compare your results, for example, with the market using information uh, provided by ISBHG or you can compare the different teams because the, uh, you are using uh, an homogeneous criteria to quantify uh, the product. Be careful because we have observed that at least an 8% of the product is not described in the user story. And this, this amount of product could be uh, richer in some teams or in some uh, clients that not, are not, um, they have not worked before with, with functional metrics. Yeah? Agile development models usually have a lack of documentation and that is part of its philosophy, okay? But it is possible to make some little changes in tools like DRAP or Confluence, or just in the way that the teams describe the user stories to change and to, to improve the situation without overload the teams with a lot of documents that most of them will be not necessary. But you can make some little changes, okay? And these little changes will um, let you to quantify the product, to estimate uh, a product backlog, or just to measure the team performance using functional metrics. But you also have to take into account that based, at least based in our experience, one of each five teams will be opposite to any changes in the way that they work. I think people mostly are very, mm, no, uh, if you implement some metrics, this is not agile. Or if you want to see what is the cost of the backlog product, that is not agile. Uh, so because of that, it is very important that any change that we propose has to be useful also for the development teams, not only for the management teams, okay? If you do that, you will get a satisfactory collaboration that will be, 
that will benefit all parts. Another point that could be related to the estimation and measurement uh, is uh, are the chain requests. If the chain requests are to, uh, to business or a strategic decisions, it could be okay because AI models are flexible to changes. Okay, that is part of its philosophy. But if it is doing a bad estimation or a lack of requirements, remember that, that functional metrics that help you to reduce these deviations also. Because it's a language that both business and team development teams can understand. So with that little changes that I taught you uh, in the last slide, you could improve also these, these, these numbers and, and reduce these increments or deviations from the initial, initial budget. A uh, story point is useful for the teams, as I tell, uh, as probably you know, is they are useful. Uh, we we are not uh, opposite uh, opposite opposite to to use them. Teams can use story points, of course, but they are not very useful to have an objective vision of the product development flow, value, and the efficiency. Okay, so. Don't forget it, because you, you can have uh, examples like, like this. For example, in the squad number three, you can see probably that the story point per Monday, it is decreasing, but the number of fortune points per Monday, it is almost, um, almost the same, remains the same, okay? And you can see situation very, with a very different behavior because, be, between different teams and also in the same team during different releases, okay? And summarizing, in, and just to finish with this, with this presentation, okay? You can help agile teams based on functional metrics, but not limited to, okay? Try not to limit all your tasks to the functional metrics. They are very important because they can't quantify the product. And if you are focused on the product, functional metrics, they are very useful to that, okay? But not forget another KPIs that are, that are all also very important. Rotation, okay? Quality, number of usually stories um, dedicated to, to technical depth, you can't, confirm your own KPIs depending on your client challenges. Try to have a, a set of useful KPIs that give your client and development teams a 360 degrees vision. Do not forget another perspective as quality, as I said before, but also risk management, technical debt, okay? Objective, objective estimations and measurements based on functional metrics can help your client to quantify the value delivered by the teams and also to compare them. Compare tribus, areas, or the performance in agile with other organization. We, we, we see, and that's true, we see uh, some behaviors that are not very, 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 uh, very good at all, okay? As I told you before, teams that almost doesn't deliver functionality to the, to the user and they spend almost their effort in, in technical issues. So uh, that's uh, all folks. I'm not going to just um, extend, extend me more. Um, thank you for, uh, thank you all for attending this, this presentation. And if there is any, any question, I'll be pleased to, to respond it. Okay, so Pierre, I can give you the the control of the. Muchas gracias, Raúl. It's a very interesting uh, topic and. and
presentation you have. Uh, let's see if we have any questions coming up here. Yes, we okay. have. Uh, let's go back. I have one uh, question from Hadri Basri. And how does a highly efficient team lead to lack of quality? Sorry, can you repeat? Yeah, how does a highly efficient team, how does that lead to lack of quality? I don't understand very well the question. I am. How does a highly efficient efficient team leads to lack to of quality? Lack, yeah. Yeah, but I don't, I don't understand what is the the meaning of the of the question. What no, is try to is Adri Barsi, that's free, uh, yes. I don't understand what what he, what what he is trying to to ask with that question. Does does uh, how do you want to unmute and elaborate? Yes, I think it's better for me to talk rather than type this. So, so Mr. Fernandez, I uh, just want to know. Uh, you mentioned your slide just now, a highly efficient team can lead to a lack in, in quality. Uh, oh, yes. So how yes, does yes. that affect? Uh, I, I don't understand it. Can you explain that? Yes, yes, okay. yes. I, I, what I try to say with this, with this sentence, with this, uh, this word, is that um, sometimes uh, teams only are focused in deliver a lot of product, in deliver uh, quickly, very quickly. Okay, probably sometimes with uh, because market a uh, business pressure. Okay, and so this this high highlight efficient in in the liver software uh, leads to a lack of quality. And what we are saying that probably the the first release, the second release, the third release deliver a lot of product. Okay, but each release from release to release they are they have a lack of quality that it is increasing continuously okay and finally what what it is what happens is that they have to spend sometimes one spring two sprints three sprints just only to um to how could to to solve that functional debt okay to solve that error derived to deliver um uh, deliver a uh, software very quickly. Have you understand me, Hadri? Yeah, got it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry. There is another question, Pierre. I, I think. Yeah. Could, could, uh, could I just make a, a comment about this uh, question that you had? Yes. Uh, I, I've seen the same situation when I've been working as a. Uh, with benchmarking of, of companies uh, for over 10 years that uh, if you try to deliver too fast and, and you you seem to be very fast delivering a lot of functionality but uh, it must be maintainable delivery and the problem shows up later on when they when they start maintaining the, the software that that is delivered so that, that could be one one uh, quality uh, side side of quality that, that will show up later on uh, when you are not thinking about uh, the total scope of, of delivery. Mm. Okay. Uh, next question uh, is from uh, Musatul. I, I, I hope I don't know if I pronounce your name correctly. But from your experience, when should we collect, collect the metric uh, like functional size and how frequent should we do that? Mm -hmm. Yes, we usually have a team to, to collect the, the functional size. And in agile teams, we usually, usually, but not only, we usually do it uh, with, the, with, the, with the, uh, the finish of the release, okay? And sometimes, uh, for example, if when they uh, deliver software, we evaluate the functional side, and we cross the functional side with other information, like effort, uh, cost, uh, um, 
number of history points, a lot of, of, of different possible metrics, and we select some KPIs that could be useful, okay? So we usually do it at the final of the, uh, when they deliver software, when they, sorry, when they um, yes, deliver software to, to, to the business. But sometimes also we use functional metrics or in estimation phases, also in agile uh, projects, because sometimes there is not a, an, a pure agile model. Sometimes also customers want to have an estimation of some, some backlog and that product is, that has to be estimated is executed in, a, in an agile mode. They, after that, they are selecting different user stories and they execute in agile mode. So in, this case, in these cases, we collect functional metrics also in, 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 a, in an estimate stage because they use them to, to fix a price for the product. Okay. Uh, Pierre? Okay. Yep. There, there, there was have, a, yeah. There was another about automated function points. Can an automated function point be used for the metrics regarding functionality of the product? Uh, or my experience with automated, automated function points, depending, uh, is not very uh, reliable, okay, in, in our case. We have done some projects using, for example, uh, tools very common like, like CAST that after a calibration, it could work uh, quite good, okay? And also we have some uh, backfiring function points that doesn't work at all. So for, for teams, we usually work with, uh, with manual counting, okay? With uh, manual counting. And also because the situation in the customers are very variable in our clients, sorry, are very, variable and, and the information is, is not uh, quite well, uh, have not a quite well traceability sometimes. So uh, my, my, my experience with automated function points is not, is not uh, very, very good right now. Probably uh, uh, in the future it could be, it, it could change, okay? It could change. Okay. And then we have uh, someone asking this. Sura Ramkumar is asking, is function points applicable in agile metho methodology? And there is an answer from Thomas Feldman as well, but please go ahead, Raul. And, and, uh, mm -hmm. Yes, about Su Sura uh, Ramkumar, yeah. of course, function points is applicable, applicable in agile methodology because function points is only a, a, a metric to, to quantify the, the, the size, the functional size of the product. So you are de delivering, you are building uh, a product, you are delivering a product, and you can deliver this product in different, different ways, in an agile way, way or in a traditional uh, way. So function point is, of course, is applicable. We use them in our different customers, and, and it's very useful because for us, represent a better measurement of the uh, product value, okay? Of the product size, the product functionality. And Thomas Feldman, hi Thomas, uh, Thomas, uh, nice to see you again. Uh, we count every, every sprint and this is much more efficient also. Uh, it allows understand how functionality growth and effort spent for NVR interact. And that's right, Thomas. We also, in some customer, count after every sprint also, but we also recommend that every sprint uh, transform it in a release. I mean, sometimes a sprint uh, do not deliver uh, functionality to the business user. So also what we try is that the one sprint one screen delivers functionality also for the user because in that way it is easier to have a, a, a better vision of the of this uh, of the of the per performance. Okay, but that's right, Thomas. Yes. 
Okay, and then I think Paula got uh, some questions sent directly to her. Yeah, um, from uh, Suda again. Um, for a digital platform, a, a digital platform service provider such as PAS, PAAS, what are the metrics that can be used? What, what is the digital platform? Um, so that... No, it's yeah. a platform as a service, uh, PAAS, I said. Platform, ah. Nowadays, Pro it's a platform as a service. Sorry, is that a question for me, uh, Paula? Um, yes, yeah, so do you want to explain, explain that a bit further, please? Nowadays, it's a digital transformation is happening. So we provide platform as a service where uh, uh, take it as a, I mean, uh, you have uh, artificial intelligence, you have uh, the analytics, data analytics, everything is there, right? As a platform, we provide, if it is a communication service provider, see, communication service provider, you have, they provide uh, the technology itself as a service. In that case, what type of metrics is relevant? The effort variance, all those effort variance, schedule variance, those things are, is it still relevant? Because everything is like, this, and I mean, the feature, I mean, more than a few, we deliver it very fast, right? Uh, today, uh, the customer experience is the key. And total experience, we talk about the total experience, more than a customer experience, the total experience, even a user, like a, a employee, the entire experience they are asking. So what are the key metrics which is relevant? Is the traditional metrics, is it still applicable or when we do platform as a service, what are the key metrics which can be used? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't have experience in in platform as a service uh, okay. environment. Okay, so I don't know. I because we work more than with with another uh, uh, products or or delivers in in another ways. So I don't know if Thomas or 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 Pierre has some experience in this way because I know that. Uh, that uh, probably, probably in, in, in the Internet of Things or in this kind of, of environments, probably you have more experience or something to, 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 that can contribute to, to, to respond to this okay. question. Okay, okay, fine. Yeah, but but I, I, I can just add that uh, from my experience, uh, developing the platform is one thing, and, and then you can use. Uh, Pierre, we have lost you. Okay. Can you repeat? Yep. Delib or developing of the platform is one thing, and for that you can use functional metrics. But then I think uh, uh, what uh, we had a question about is probably about the uses of the platform, and, and that's another thing that then you can measure with other metrics. Okay, so we had um, another question on um, how the rotation penalizes um, their efficiency. How? Yeah. Because the rotation, because they yeah. have to learn. Okay, of course. In one of the slides you mentioned for all that, uh, job, I mean, the team rotation, it affects the efficiency you mentioned. Yeah. I just want to know how the, if the internally, if they move from one project to another project, does it really affect the efficiency? If you can throw some light on it. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yes, because the, the changes from project to project to product to product or also the, because some people, uh, uh, goes to another company, okay, to, to deliver another, with another company. So this changes, this rotation of people, this changes, it has a, a big impact in the productivity of the team. Yes, that's true. Because we, in our services, we only, we use, use functional metrics to, to some kind of KPIs, like for example, the, the, the efficiency, the, the, the productivity, the quality density, the the, the velocity of the of the functional uh, delivery, okay. But also we have some other metrics focus in other things. For example, the number of people to change in the team, okay. The number of the rotation of the team, okay. Another uh, information 
that helps us, help us to analyze what are the causes of the correlation between different situations and the efficiency and the, or, or the productivity. So we have observed that the rotation uh, uh, has a, a, a correlation with less efficiency in the, in the development teams. Okay. And, and one last one from uh, Suda. How customers experience can be measured? Oh, customer experience can be measured depending also on the, who is the, the customer. Who is the customer? If it is a final customer or is it a business customer, okay? Who is the customer? Who is the client? Of course, customer experience in a, in a product that you deliver to the market to, to every user, you can see the customer uh, experience. You, uh, for example, you see the, 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 the evaluation of the application, okay, the, the social social media, okay, social networks, and, and so you can evaluate uh, in uh, this this experience in, in, in other terms, okay? If it is a business, business application, an internal application, or, or uh, more, more a quotated uh, uh, application, uh, you can also uh, evaluate uh, some uh, questions, I don't know how to ask some questions to the, to the customers and so. So the, 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 the experience also, when you use some application, you also sometimes receive an email in your in your in your, in your phone. I don't remember the name in English. You, you receive an email just to evaluate the, the product, just to check, to, to leave some comments. So I think all these things contribute contribute to to evaluate to validate to evaluate the, the customer experience.